Alrighty, what's going on guys? Down here, down there is the diff housing that we got last episode from Jay. I'm gonna do a bit of clean up, make it look good. First things first is I wanna take back the top layer of sort of surface rust and paint and try and do a bit of clean up, see what I can do. Then I'm gonna either make or buy a brace. I don't know which yet, but let's get into it. The next video in the Luxie Rebuild Saga is about to begin. Well, it's already begun. But first things first, I need to remove this anti-wrap bar mount. It is not applicable for my car and it's kind of in the way. So, oh, great. Not even a minute in and I've already destroyed a stud. Like I was saying, I don't have a wrap bar on my car and uh, if my leaves are gonna flex like that, I, I, I'll i give them a medal because that just means that the car's making some ounce of power. And for all of you know-it-alls saying that I'm gonna regret this and I should have kept it, well, bugger. I should have listened to you this one time because it's gone now. I figured if I need one, I'll make one. This one right now is pissing me off, so I'm getting rid of it. Sorry, that was uh, a little bit out of pocket. All right, now that we've got the main chunk of metal out of the way, I'm taking off the breather plug which I probably should have done earlier, but this allowed me to get much closer than I ever have before to cutting into the essential part of the diff housing and, and grinding it out entirely. I had to stay diligent and careful of how much force I was applying because with these huge muscles in my arms, I'm not always aware of my strength. That was a joke. I'm built like a three week old chicken. But now with this anti-wrap bar mount gone, next up is removing the steering damper. Now who needs those? Instead of being responsible, I took the easy way out and just ground it off. Oh yeah, now that's a bad diff if I've ever seen one. Nothing but mounts for the shocks and the leaves. Sounds like a play on the birds and the bees. I got a flap disc and started slowly grinding away at the dust. Rust, rusty dust. And I quickly realized I'm gonna need some respiratory protection. The next day, I decided to take my troubles outside. If I had to breathe in dangerous rust particles, then everyone else does too. After all, it's a free country. But my plan for today was to get a few wire wheel attachments for my drill and scrape away the rust in some of the hard to reach areas. It was honestly a lot more effective than I thought it was gonna be. I thought I'd be there all day, but I was only there for 23 hours. The drill can only spin so fast and the batteries only last so long, but I did my best. I got the majority of the rust off and was pretty happy with the result. I then cleaned it up with some terps and some methylated spirits. Mm, I'm not sure how they died, but I hope they recovered from their addiction. I also tried to get rid of all of the diff oil from the inside because I knew that I would be welding to this and I didn't want it to catch fire. But mm, mm, would you look at that nice shiny diff? Well, for the most part, I guess. But I'm happy with where this diff is at and tomorrow I'm taking it up to Sam's place. Days of preparation had led up to this day. I had fetched a new diff housing, I had cleaned it up, I had cut off unnecessary mounts and grinded back the rust. I loaded the housing and a few other bits and pieces into the back of the Persia. Namely, this piece of 75 by 50 millimetre RHS steel with a five millimetre wall thickness. This is what's gonna be the diff brace for our housing. It'll also be the center of the rest of the video and almost turn the video into a how to brace your Toyota front diff because that's, that's something that people want to know, right? I arrived at HQ and immediately started work because those of you who have cut five millimeter steel with an angle grinder before know that it will take a long time. So long in fact, that it just took me 15 minutes to cut this bar in half. That's disregarding any type of shape or curvature that the brace will need to have to fit the housing. But as you can see on the piece of steel, we have a rough outline of the cuts that I need to make. And this was just made by cardboard. Good old cardboard, making a nice template, sitting it on the diff and deciding what shape it needs to be. And then just simply tracing it onto the timber. Metal, I meant to say metal. But this is when I started cutting the actual brace. And this is when I had to check that I was cutting on the right side of the line. You know, dear viewer, you're lucky that I was able to turn down the volume of this angle grinding. It was truly ear piercing. It was resonating inside the tube and on the metal bench that I was working on. You know, you can trust me to look out for you. Haha, <laughs> did that getcha? I mean, it got me multiple times and I'm editing the video. Alrighty, sorry guys, I'm just gonna take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video. Me. What, I'm, su I'm supposed to read this? Read the damn paper! Okay, okay, what do you get when 100% Australian grown organic cotton and high quality heat transfer film meet? Well, I mean, it depends how they meet. In this case, you get a very comfortable dessert. <laughs> dessert? A very comfortable shirt and a high quality design. SOSTV.shop, support this channel. Thank you. Back to the diff brace. I'm now cutting the largest, longest line to cut on this whole thing, and it's gonna take me damn near the whole day. That's when Sam showed up with a gift, plasma cutting. The next best thing to slice bread is to punch through five millimeter steel with ionized air. And then it's through. So I stopped recording a little bit too early, but Sam said it might be difficult to follow the tracing line because the light is so bright. Maybe, I'll see we decided to keep going. Oh, 
many videos. Huh? The pressure was on. How was I to follow this line when I had never plasma cut before? I didn't want to look like a fool, so I dove in head first and decided to give it a good crack. And I had no chance at seeing that line. I just guesstimated where it would be and dragged it along. Before I knew it, it was done. I, uh, I thought it'd be cool to point the camera down and, and smack it on the ground a few times to pop it off and I didn't actually have any of it in frame at all. But this is what we were left with. A rough shape of a diff brace. You can see which side I cut and it was truly appalling. It, it fit decently, but like many men, it sort of just bent to the left. And as I expected, I still had a bit of work to do on the angle grinder to get it to fit as well as the other one did. So I got to work trying to smooth out the plasma cuts and fit the contours of the diff. This took so much time. But as you can see, it's slowly coming up a tree. The next thing I had to do was cut little notches here for the welds and the leaf springs. I roughly marked out where to cut and well, yeah, I cut them. And as you can see, I ended up removing them because they just didn't work. I don't know. It definitely wasn't because I had messed up the cuts and, and cut too far. But regardless, I'm really happy with how it's looking and we're just about ready to weld. Most of the brace was making contact and the majority of the welding is going to be quite cold. So I was confident I was going to be able to fill the holes. But I decided to spend a little more time to clean it up and try and get it as perfect as I can. And this is what I was left with. It fits a lot better than I thought it would, considering I made it. But... In truth, it's now time to weld, and this was the part I was most scared about. I've heard so many horror stories of bending axles that I was convinced I was going to do the same. And I really didn't want to have to buy a new housing. In my anxieties, I forgot to hit the record button, but I mean, here are the tacks. To reduce the risk of warping the diff, I undergoed a few procedures. Un undergoed? Underwent. Did, I did. One was marking out stitches to do, inch at a time, with an inch in between of no weld. <laughs> in theory, this would half the amount of welding I have to do and half the amount of heat that the diff would have to put up with. Accompanying this, after every single stitch, I would leave the diff for five to seven minutes to cool down completely. That way its core temperature would never reach uh, hot enough to bend it. I don't know what I was doing here, why I was stroking it, but I had my first bead laid and it was looking pretty good. Again, I'm open to constructive criticism in the comments. Constructive criticism. I haven't done a whole lot of welding and I know that this one is pretty cold. It's sort of just sat on the outside and hasn't really penetrated too much, but again, the thought of this housing bending was in the forefront of my brain. But considering the amount of welds there are and it's a compression brace, I figured it'll be just fine. It's not like the card's gonna be hitting any jumps. Right? I tried to evenly work my way through the diff, flipping it around every two stitches to do the front and back evenly. I don't know if this actually did anything, but it felt right, so I did it. And waited between each stitch. Like it? What do you reckon? Yes, I think the dog approved of my welds. The hardest part was over, the welding. But only time would tell if this axle is actually bent. I really don't think it would be, but I guess the amount of axle seals that we'll chew through will will let me know. All in all, share your thoughts with me on the di Oh my god. Share your thoughts with me on this diff brace in the comments below. There's a few little extra things I need to do in order to get it to look like my old one, and that is these little gussets on the knuckles. Yeah, those ones. Because you can see how thin the knuckle gets, and I don't want that bending. I don't want any of this bending, damn it. But that is something I'll be doing in the next episode, as well as painting it. And before too long, this housing should be in the car. And then mechanically, it is all correct, as it should be. It'll have four-wheel drive, and it'll be crawling in no time. Of course, though, there's a lot more to do still. One of those is building a new bull bar. But that's a bridge we'll cross at another time. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video. I've never... That's the first time I've ever said... That was weird.